Hello and welcome to the show iTunes is calling Access Involvement. I'm Billy Ferris and each week I'm joined by a different member of the student involvement team. Today it is the coordinator for student organizations, Alexis Davis. Alexis, how's it going? Hey! Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, this is my first time ever being on the radio. Actually, first okay, time. I lied. I remember in middle school, right. I called the radio, and Chris Brown was on the radio, and I talked to him, and I cried in my car. So you're a, ve- <laughs> you're a veteran of this kind of thing, then. Basically, no big deal. Okay, you're a veteran of this kind of thing. So usually I tell people if it's their first time, like, hey, this means it's the best you're ever, you're the best you'll have done, but so... I guess you have one to compare it to. Yeah, you can't beat Chris Brown. I'm going to do my best to not make you cry. <gasps> okay, great. And I then, think that's a good thing. Okay. That should be a goal I have for every yeah, show. Probably. I agree. I agree. But, but that's your one experience on the radio, so I feel like let's, yeah. let's you know. It was happy tears, though, right? It was. Okay. I like the radio, too. You know how people are like, no radio. I enjoy listening to the radio every day. Okay. I think it's kind of fun. Okay. I have my shows I listen to. You have your shows you listen to. Yeah, on the radio. Okay. Like morning shows. Okay. Like your drive time shows. Yeah. Okay. Well, then pretend this is your favorite drive time show. Okay. And we're going to entertain the the people. Okay. The people. Hey, people. The people. She's waving. See, I, I love the energy. I love the energy. All right. And with that, I want you to bring that energy into our first segment called Pop Quiz. Oh, okay. All right. So Pop Quiz. I'm going to ask you seven questions, just general icebreaker questions, so our viewers can get to know you, okay. who you are, a little bit better. Okay. So as I always say, there are no rules for Pop Quiz. Answer any way you want. Okay. I'm also, I'm waiting. I'm looking at our producer. I'm waiting for someone to just answer a completely different question when I say that, but we'll see how that goes. Okay. Let's do it. I'm ready. All right. Number one, if you could be any animal, what animal would you be? I would be a giraffe because I think they're so fun and they're really cute. Okay. And they just vibe in the wild. They just vibe <laughs> in the wild. Okay. I would be a kangaroo. I want the pouch. Like, I feel like that would be like wearing a hoodie all the time. And that's my dream. If I ran if I ran a company. She's a good audience. I like when people laugh when I don't have to, you know. Because I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm not funny enough for that laugh. So that was exciting for me. But I feel like my dream, like, if I ran a company, like, the dress code would be hoodie. Because, like, that is, like, valid. wearing a hug. And I feel like that's what a kangaroo would be. Valid. I like giraffes. I think they're just, okay. they're majestic. Fair. In a different type of way. Okay. Number two. What's a common expression that you don't like? Like a word? It's just an expression or a word. There are no rules to pop quiz. Um, okay, perf. But I say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an expression I don't like, but I say it all the time. So. Okay. So you, okay. So you don't like when other people say it? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Perf. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mine is it goes without saying. People say like this goes without saying and then proceed to say whatever that thing is. Right. That Don't even old. tell me that if. If I have to know it. Yeah. Fair. Okay. So, number three. If you could, like, fully learn any skill to where you, like, had, like, a total mastery of it in one day, what skill would you want it to be? Do not judge me, people, on the podcast telling time. I'm very – I'm not good at telling time completely, like, on, like, a regular clock. <laughs> digital me. Okay. Apple Watch is digital. So, I would say telling time. Yeah, I was about to so on, on, like, a – Analog clock. Oh, yeah. Okay, because I was about to say telling time. I was about to be like, it's 9.52 Central Time. What time is it in Atlanta right oh, now? Oh, no, not telling time on, a, on oh. an analog. Okay. Yes. I don't. I think I missed that part of school. I feel like you don't even need to know that anymore. Yeah, and I just winged it. I just think. ask Siri. When they used to, to give us the times on like your math, you used yeah. to be like, tell the time. Always got it wrong. Always got Always it wrong. Got okay, we'll have lessons after this. Mine, by the way, I would like to be able to like compare completely know the guitar perfectly in one day okay okay that, like, that takes a while so like that'd be fun to learn that's understandable day. i don't know if i like to i use my mom forced me to be in piano boring but i don't know i don't i just like to i don't know i think if i can perfect i if i can perfect having the perfect sleep in a day Ooh, boom that's perfect eight one. hours like no interruptions not getting up in the middle of the night for x y and z just the perfect eight hours of sleep and waking up feeling rested i think will be amazing that would be a good one. Uh, what song is one that you never get tired of hearing? Oh, I love music. I think right now a song that I can keep hearing over and over is called Damage by Her. Okay. So I can literally listen to it 5,000 times and like still sing it to the top of my lungs. So Damage by Her. She also has dropped a new album today. So go listen. <laughs> Shameless plug for no, for no money. For no money. Uh, if you had to give a TED Talk, what would your topic be? Hmm. 
TED Talk? Oh, this is a, these are good questions. Thank you. I like when my questions are complimented. Um, it's a good time for me. TED Talk. I would say either living in the now or being a genuine friend. Because I feel like people don't are not really genuine friends. Like, I can, I don't even know. Is, is, to, is this about me? No, 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 no. I have so many friends and I have different pockets mm-hmm. of friends, but people have to realize that I don't have to talk to you every day to be your friend. Right. Like, I have a friend that I haven't talked to in two weeks, three weeks, and I talked to her today, and it's like we haven't skipped a beat. So just, like, being a genuine friend. Maybe. That's how you know when people are real friends is when you can go, like, two, three weeks, two months, and it's like, oh, Yes, no, and I talked to another friend the, yesterday, actually. I haven't talked to her in, like, a while, and I'm, she was like, you want to come see me? I'm like, sure, because I know we have not missed a beat. My TED Talk would be a lot more specific than yours. Mine, okay, would, mine would be why the Texas style of barbecue is a superior style of barbecue. Okay, I've never had Texas to barbecue. Like, it's like salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of garlic, and then just smoke. I don't know. That's, I'm, I think, the best. To be honest, I'm not really like a barbecue person. Like, I don't like ribs. Just give me some chicken and I'll be fine. Texas is also very beef-based barbecue. Okay, I like beef brisket. That's Texas. Like but I don't that's... like pork brisket, but I like bacon. Like the pork, if I have to eat pork. Pork it's belly? Like, yeah, no. That sounds less appetizing than bacon. I want bacon. It's the same thing. All day, every day. I can eat a whole pack of bacon. <laughs> bacon is the perfect food. <laughs> All right, number six. Okay. If you were to live in another country, let's say for a year, what country would that be? I would want to live in Spain. I went to Spain when I was in 10th grade on like a trip and I loved it. So I want to go, I would want to live in Spain because the architecture in this is so gorgeous. I would in Spain for sure. All right. And uh, number seven, this is the last question of pop quiz. We made it to the end. If you could add one person to Mount Rushmore, who would it be? Wait, add or remove? Add. <gasps> who would you add to Mount Rushmore? And there are no rules. It does not have to be a president. Yeah. Because I, I think, like, stop, are, stop hogging it, presidents. Are, wait, I was just about to ask her, all presidents on Mount Rushmore? <laughs> Didn't I know that. I think so. Um, yeah. We'll go with yes. I don't know. Everything I know about Mount Rushmore comes from National Treasure 2, so I feel like that might not be the most historically accurate movie. Um, adding someone to Mount Rushmore. Me. Because why not? I like that answer. I'm a boss, so they're up there, so I cannot be... <laughs> I'm going to copy that answer and say myself. Yeah. Too, like, cause like why not? Who says they have to why be not? there? Like, I'm famous in my head. I mean, after this. After this, yeah. Alexis, once this hits the internet, sure. there's no turning back for you. And I'm probably, us. no offense to my other staff members, I'm probably going to get the most views because I'm going to send it to everybody in my contact list. So. Our producer just perked up over here. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying, I'm the boss. <laughs> I do like that idea of like who can get the most views. Making that some kind and of... And whoever gets the most views will get something. A cup. Are you in charge of that? Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. Kind of an unfair cup. advantage for the people who go early, but... Awkward. No, my problem. We'll <laughs> Not your problem on episode four. All right. Well, that was Pop Quiz. Uh, like everyone else, four episodes in a row, we have some, someone passes Pop Quiz, so that's a good sign. Off to a good start. Uh, we're going to move now into Let's Get Personal. Okay, perfect. And that's where we're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about your job, what you do here, your philosophy for it in a little while. But right now, I want to talk just about you, how you got here, and just kind of who you are as a person. So as we always do on this show, we're going to start with the start. Where are you from? I'm from Stone Mountain, Georgia, All right, so which is outside of Atlanta. Outside of Atlanta and um, populated area. Populated, very populated. I also am from that area. Yeah, me and uh, Billy don't live far over. away from each other. Nope. So I moved down there when I was eight, but you have been, you've been, been there your whole life. I've until... lived in my same house for, I am 25, for 25 years. Okay. My mom has been in Atlanta since like the 80s, so yeah. It's crazy how much it's grown. Yeah. It just keeps getting bigger and yes, bigger and bigger. I've and... literally been there for my entire life, which is kind of fun. So how was it growing up there? I mean, it was fine. I liked it. It was just me and my mom, so we're just vibing. I like living in Atlanta because it's always something to do. My mom never had me just, like, at the house on the weekend, so we always did something, whether that was, like, she took me to the bookstore to, like, go get a book, or we went to the park. So I'm when I'm, like, being stagnant, I hate it because I like doing things constantly because she always had me, like, going. Did you go to Stone Mountain Park? Yes, all the time. What were your favorite things to do there? 
Um, walking up the mountain, getting on the like sky lift thing, which is kind of sketchy. The sky tram it takes you. So if you've never been there, it takes you up to the very top of the mountain, where it's like a little store yeah. slash like in a bathroom. <laughs> think of like think of like a concession stand, but like a concession stand at a lowly populated like little league park, where it's like you can get like a soda and maybe some peanuts if they're not out. Yes, and then that's it. But it's such a cool view, and you can, like see you so can so see far. Every, you can literally see all of Atlanta. They also have, um, they used to have this thing called Ride the Duck. So we used to get in like this car that turns into a boat, which was kind of fun. You go on the lake, but then they also now have Snow Mountain. So they transform like the big green to like fake snow. And living in Georgia, you don't get real snow, so that's kind of fun. And when you do, you're not going anywhere. Correct, because the road's snow not so great. Snow apocalypse. Everyone right. remembers. Um, ride the ducks. I remember that one. And I remember like as a kid thinking that was something going to be very different. I was like so excited. It's like, oh, you don't get to like ride a duck. Yeah, like, it was going to be it awesome. was definitely very. very <laughs> and you don't get to actually ride a real duck. So that no. was disappointing. I don't know how that would have worked, but. I mean, vibe. I don't know. Cool. We can get like, you know how they have those big um, flamingos that people get in the pool with? You can mm-hmm. get a duck one. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I feel like that would be less fun than like the actual like car boat thing they have. Yeah. There. So, as you're growing up in Stone Mountain, did you know you wanted to go into higher education, or was there something else you, you kind of thought you? Yeah, did? no, I wanted to be a doctor. I got my undergrad degree in biology, so I wanted to be a doctor, specifically an orthopedic surgeon, because of Grey's Anatomy. Because of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> yes. Okay, we'll come back to that later. But uh, where do you go to college, and did you go to college with that in mind? Um. Yes. Well, no, no. I went to school at Georgia Southern University, the best university on the planet. Except um, for Auburn University. Yeah. I do like Auburn. It's the top <laughs> two. No, it's number two. Okay. But I went to Georgia Southern because I wanted, I really wanted to go to LSU. My mom was like, well, if you go out of state, you won't get a car. So I said, car, out of state, car, out of state. So I picked in state so I could get a car. Georgia Southern was the best four years of my life. I met some of the best people there. I had a great time. It's in the middle of nowhere. So that always humbles you, which is really good. But it was fun. I loved it. How did it How did it humble you? Um, being in the middle of nowhere, you learn about different pockets of people. So being in Atlanta, I just assumed everybody was like me. But when I got to Georgia Southern and realized, like, some people don't have it just like me. So that was very interesting. And just being somewhere where there was one grocery store, where in Atlanta, there's a grocery store in every corner. So just trying to prepare for that mm-hmm. and being somewhere where it's like just far away, you see cotton fields and lots of other Especially uh, Atlanta's and Metro Atlanta is so densely populated. Yeah. So, so the element of culture shock when you got down there? Oh, yeah. How long would you say that took you to adjust to? Um, so I went the summer before I started school. So I did like summer school. So I think after the summer going, probably like December, I was okay. But like, it took me a while. And then my mom brought my car. So when she brought my car, it was a lot better. But I hated walking places. I hated trying to find rides. So yeah. So, um, were you involved in any organizations when you were in college? Yeah, um, I was an RA, so I was a resident assistant for three and a half years. I um, led alternative break student trip, so we I took students to Florida, and I, we also went to the Tennessee Mountains, which was fun. I was also a part of our OID at Georgia Southern, and so I was a mentor for incoming freshman students, which was really exciting. And I feel like I did something else, but I don't remember. What was your favorite thing you did? Um, I think being an RA and working in our multicultural office, those are my favorite two things. Those are the things that got me to Auburn and getting my master's in higher education. Okay. So then you leave college. I guess that can be my next question. You leave college. You come to Auburn for your master's. Yes. I started here in August of 2018. Yeah, 2018. I've been here for a while. And that took two years. Two years. Yep. Graduated last year during your pandemic, which was fun. My mom set up like a, you know, everybody was doing drive-bys during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. She set up a surprise drive-by. People like came to my house and like set up these like card my yard things. People, friends, like blocking the street. It was amazing. I remember it's hard for me to remember that you just graduated during the pandemic because it felt like you were a full time staff member while you were a grad student here. Yes. And yes. so like I have to remind myself like you're this was just the end of your first year as a full time person. Yes. And we'll get more into that later. Okay. But like you when you were a grad assistant, you operated like a full time staff. Member, yeah. Which I think going into like an advice piece for students is how you do 
be the person that gets hired full time. Yes, exactly. Like showing that like I have that ability. Is that something that you were doing purposefully or is that just is it just like that's your work ethic so you're going to put everything into what you do? Yeah, I think it's more so my work ethic just because I don't want anything to go undone. So even if that's, I know we have a certain amount of hours we have to work per week, which I definitely understand. But if it's me working my hours in the office and if I have a project that I know needs to get done, I will make sure it's done before the deadline so I can send it off to somebody so they can read, so they can look at it to make sure it's right. I like to, even though I'm last minute, I, I feel like I'm last minute, I'm really not last minute. I feel like sometimes procrastination, like it's good to not procrastinate, but I feel like I sometimes work better under pressure than no pressure. So sometimes that procrastination like forces me to be at my best. Yeah, no, I agree. I used to procrastinate all the time in my um, grad program when I had a 10 page paper due. I would do it the day before to get 100. That said, you and I are not (laughs) procrastinators in some areas because whenever there are Zoom meetings in the office, Alexis and I are the first two people in there by like 10 minutes. Like we cannot help but be insanely early. No, yeah, I'm always there early. But now I'm like, I'm going to have one person to talk to when I jump in early, so it's fine. It's always going to be me, right? (laughs) It's always going to be you, and it's always like we're popping up at almost the same time every time. (laughs) And I'm I'm here for it. I'm sorry for it. So if you could look back at your college time now, Mm -hmm. and you can take this from grad school, undergrad, kind of whatever you want. But I think this is a better question for undergrad. Knowing now, if you knew it then, like what would you do something differently? Or like what would you tell yourself if you could talk to your like day one freshman yourself? I don't think I would do anything differently because I think all the experiences I had in undergrad made me who I am today. But I would just continue to tell myself, just do it. Go for it. And if you fail, that's okay. Somebody is always going to be there to pick you up. There were some times I had to take chemistry twice because I failed. You know what? I cried and I did it over and I passed. So I think just give give yourself grace and know that everything is going to be fine. I think that's something, too, you have to keep in mind for students Mm -hmm. is – if you don't do well in one particular class, it doesn't mean you're not smart. It doesn't exactly. mean it doesn't mean you shouldn't be here, but it might mean if your major you chose has a ton of classes like that, like there might be a better major for you. Exactly. And that's what I wish I would have done. I wish I would have switched majors. But I at one point the point I wanted to switch majors, I was literally so far in, it was just like, Okay, let me make sure I'm passing everything so I can leave here with the the a three point oh, I was like, a three point oh is fine with me. Let me just get out of here. And I mean, I have a job and I'm in grad school, so I mean, hey. That's what I think this was is either the last episode or the episode before this we talked about when I was in school, I thought everybody had a three point or better. I thought that was like the floor. Yeah. And it's not. No. And, and it's not. Um but a three point oh, like if you're a student watching this and you have a three point oh or better, like always aim for the four point oh because yeah. I mean you should try to do your best. But if you have a three or better, feel great about that and put it on your resume. Right. Because not everyone does. Exactly. Uh, and that's something that took me well after college to figure out. Exactly. And then we're realizing that once you get a job, if it's not even in education, like they don't care about your GPA. Like once you have that piece of paper and your degree, that's what they want to see. They want to see that you got the degree. They don't care if you had a two point five. You have that piece of paper. That's what they want to see. Well, I've talked to students about this before that I've run into after because like I in the past, I like taught classes here and I was like, oh, I don't know. I remember in your class, like I got a C or I got a B. I'm like, honestly, I don't remember what grades you get. Right. I remember like, what were you like when we were having class discussions? Uh, did you come to office hours for help? Did you like grow over the course of the exactly. semester? What you learned and what your grade is don't always line up. Correct. Sometimes they do. 100%. But like, I think once you graduate, it's what you learn, what you know, what you can do. Mm-hmm. It's not like, oh, but I got a 95. Okay. But if you don't know how to do it. 95 doesn't help. Doesn't matter, yeah. Exactly. Or if you got an 80, but you really committed to learning how to do it, that's the better candidate yeah, in that case. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I think sometimes that's what I love about involvement is we – I see our roles very much as teachers. <coughs> mm-hmm. and But I think, like, when we can teach without the grade hovering over students' heads, I think sometimes that lets us teach in a more effective way mm-hmm. because they're not worried about the grade. They're just trying to learn what we're showing them. Yeah. Um, and then I wonder, like, would it be better if grades didn't exist? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. Our producer is is glaring at me. I think she likes grades. No, but she I, said it would I don't be think better. it will be better. I don't, I know because I know for some professions you have to get that grade. Very true. Like, and I, there would be people yeah. who would get lazy with it. Yeah, like yeah. no offense. I I want to. So you I want, want a like, doctor. You want... I will want somebody who's my doctor who actually, one, loves what they do, but also knows what they're doing. That is true. So, like, that a little bit of both. Okay. 
then I will not try to single-handedly fix the education system. Not today. Not today. Maybe next week. <laughs> Maybe next week. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next week. So when you're out of out of work, what do you like doing? Watching Netflix, hanging out with my producer, <laughs> and my other friends upstairs. I just like hanging out. I like that she says her other friends upstairs because I am like one of two people who work downstairs in the <laughs> office. That's That was nice. No, Billy is also my friend. <laughs> Like, I like hanging I like, out. There's two of us that don't work upstairs. I like hanging out with my friends upstairs. No, that no, was no. What, no, that was like I tipped my hat. That was good. And then I also like getting food. I love eating, eating, and traveling and eating. I thought I liked hanging out with my friends upstairs, but... Um, no, and eating. <laughs> and eating. <laughs> uh, and then, without going into too much, like, job specifics, like, how has your first year as a full-time staff Honestly, been? Honestly, it's been pretty good. Overall, it's been a lot starting a job during the pandemic, but out of if I give it out of 10, I give it about an 8.5. It's pretty high for a year that was so different. Yeah, I, I honestly, I really give it an 8.5 out of 10, so I really like a year. That's good. That's good. We like 8.5, so that's, uh, that's a solid B+. Plus. Yeah. We don't, we don't have pluses. But for a year in a pandemic when we couldn't do everything that we normally do, exactly. That's really that speaks to what, I guess, what the culture is here. Yeah, and, and I'm it, hoping this year it'll be a 10. Yes, yeah. we're like back. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. All right. Well, that was Let's Get Personal. And we are now going to take a break from the job personal related questions and go into midterms. Oh. This is this is a test. This is where grades do matter. Okay. So I'm going to ask you 10 trivia questions that I've prepared specifically to you, your interest, your life. Okay. Uh, and every every week I'm going to update the standings. Um, but the winner after the end of all of these episodes is going to be able to say like they're the office trivia champion. Okay, so who's in first place? So right now, um, Amy Shugart is in first place with five. The producer, the of producer, course. because the producer probably made the questions. She didn't. However, there is a controversy because she got a little help from the first episode producer on one question. Who who is no longer he's. She's taken over the producer role after this, so there it, it's five. It could be four. We're okay. waiting on the review board to rule on that. Okay. Uh, and then okay. Alonzo C. and Dana Gramulia are tied at two. Okay. In second place. So I, I love my coworkers upstairs, but I can beat them. Okay, so to get on the podium, you got to get two or better. I can get two. Okay. Sorry. All right, I'm going to ask the producer, producer Amy, to keep track of how many you get right. Uh, I'm ready. Okay. Pencils down, phones down. Ready. Okay. Number one. What year did the Atlanta airport becomes the world's busiest airport? I will give you the hint that it happened within our lifetime. What do you mean within our lifetime? Um, I think it was probably. I mean within our lifetime. I would say, I would say was after 9-11. Person, I, that's what I think I would say would be after 9-11. So I would say 2005 or 2006. I'll have to pick one. You got to pick one. I'm going to go with 2005. That was the first number in my head. You're right. <gasps> what? <laughs> That's impressive. I did not think you were going to get that one. I right. didn't either. That wow. was the first number that popped in my when head. When you said, when she said 2005 or 2006, it's like, oh, which one's she going to say? Okay. That's impressive. So we're off to a good start. Okay. Num- number two. What cele- This is a multiple choice question. Okay. Now I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't give you multiple choice. What celebrity worked as a vendor at Falcons games okay. prior to 1991? I wasn't born, but okay. Paul Rudd. Samuel L. Jackson, Steve Carell, Chris Pratt. It was either Paul Rudd, because that's Ant-Man, or Samuel L. Jackson. But I think by then, Samuel L. Jackson, because he went to Morehouse, which is the HBCU in Atlanta. But I think by then he was gone. So I'm going to go with Paul Rudd. Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, man. Well, I knew it was one of them, because Paul Rudd is from Atlanta. I would have thought, too, that prior, prior to 1991, it was in the story that I found about it, but I'm like, I would have thought he was already, like, in movies. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. All right, number three. This is uh, the other multiple choice question. Okay. How many acres is Auburn's campus? 1,500, 1,800, 2,000, 2,500. Does this include the vet school? It does. Say them again. 1,500, 1,800, 2,000, 2,500. I'm going to go with 1,800. Correct. So we are on the podium. We're on the podium. Ha, ha. And you're two for three. Okay, two for three. I'm ready. Two for three. If this was a baseball game, you'd have a good stat one. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. But there are seven at-bats left. 
Number four, you like Grey's Anatomy. Yes. You mentioned that you might even have made a career decision based on it. Yes. But not a long time. It has. How many of the original cast members are still on the show? As of today? As of today. As of, actually, I'm going to say as of April, because that's when the story was from. Well, I don't know if they left, because someone did leave. And I don't know if it was April or May, though. So I'm going to go with two. It's just Meredith and um, Dr. Bailey. Well, Jackson is there, but he just left. I don't know if he left in April. I don't know if he left in May. What is Jackson's last name? Avery. Nope. Then it's, nope. So two is your answer. It's three. It's Gray, Bailey, and Weber. Weber. I thought he died. I forgot. Yes, it is three. Okay. I was right. going to, if you it were, if you, if, if you had said Weber and you didn't know like when he left, then I, that yeah, no, I, that, I forgot about Dr. Weber. Yeah. Valid. Okay. Valid. Okay. All right. So that, so we're two for four. Okay. Number five, you're from Georgia. What is this official state crop of Georgia? The crop is the peanut. Correct. The bird is the brown thrasher. So you've done your research. <laughs> I, in Georgia, if y'all don't know, when you were in Georgia, what well, used to be in eighth grade, you took Georgia history. Yep. So you learned about all that. So yes. Okay. okay. But not everyone remembers what they learn in eighth That's grade. That's true. That's so. true. I thought maybe you had identified my trivia patterns and I was going to have to like change it no, up. No. I, I mean, I know this Georgia state crop, but I don't know how to tell time. So, you know, balance. Fair enough. <laughs> That's why you're always so early to Zoom meetings. Balance. Okay. Number six, another Atlanta-based question. Okay. We're at, we're at three? Yeah, All right. we're at three. It's getting exciting. What road in metro Atlanta area was, was known as one of the ten most dangerous in the country before replacing alternating turn lanes with a permanent median? Alternating turn lanes with a permanent. There was a road that was one of the ten most dangerous in a road, America. Like a road name or a highway number. Can can we get that specific? Because I will. It's a highway. Okay. I will tell uh, you. The that. only reason I'm asking is because road. There's a say. Can you, so the whole question. Yeah. Um. What road? And it is a highway. Okay. Um, in Metro Atlanta area, uh-huh. was known as one of the ten most dangerous in the country, until they replaced their alternating turn lanes with a permanent median. I would say, Buford Highway. It's Highway seventy eight. Really? Mm-hmm. And I drive on Highway 78, but I don't think it's that dangerous. It was when they had alternating turn lanes, though, because half the time one thing was a turn lane and the other was the fast lane, and then it switched. Oh, valid, valid. Okay, okay. okay. Number Before s- my time. Number seven. <laughs> okay. You have also said that you are a fan of, like, Bravo reality TV. Yes. That is not my area of expertise, if I'm being totally transparent. Peek behind the curtain. I don't watch a lot of Bravo. Okay. But I still found a trivia question for it. Okay. Which of the following is not a Real Housewives series? Oh, oh, I got this. Atlanta, New Jersey, New Orleans, Potomac. New Orleans, duh. Potomac is about to come back on July 12th. I'll be watching. Atlanta well, that's my finished. birthday. Oh, really? And Bravo, then, give me a better birthday present, Bravo. Oh, and okay. then um, Atlanta just finished, and New Jersey just had the reunion last week. Okay. I'm at four. You're at four. Ooh, this could get interesting if you stay at four. Right. We'll see what happens. All right, number eight. What's older, the first self-driving car or the first CD-ROM? I don't think it's the obvious. I'm going to go with the car. Correct. Oh. Self-driving car, 1977, CD-ROM, 1982. Okay. Also, I would not have gotten in. I wasn't alive either, but I would not have gotten in a self-driving car in 1977. The first person to get in the first self-driving car is a level of brave that I will never achieve. Mm-hmm. That's just not going to happen. I won't do it until like everyone else is doing it yeah. at this point. I like me. All right, so we're at five. Okay. So you were either tied or in first place. Okay. All right. So that's, that's a good day so far. Number nine. You went to Georgia Southern. I did. As we learned in Let's Get Personal. What Georgia Southern alumni has won multiple Academy of Country Music or Country Music Association Entertainer of the Year awards? I know this. His name is Cole Swindle. No. Nope. He went to Georgia Southern. He did, but Luke Bryan is the one who's won the Luke Bryan didn't graduate, though. You don't have to graduate to be an alumni. What? <laughs> Look, Brian did go to Georgia Southern, but I didn't think he graduated. You can say so you don't have to graduate to be an alumni. Yeah. Well, Cole Swindle and Luke Bryan. I met Cole Swindle a couple times. He's kind of fun. 
Luke doesn't come back as much as he. I does. thought for sure you were gonna say it right when you said, "I know that." Oh, I didn't think because I just I didn't know. I don't, All right. Well, fine. I mean, but what? five is still not bad. At least so you I got knew. one left. Oh, you I got, got one, one question left. left. Oh, okay. So still a chance it. to set the new bar. Okay, okay. I thought that was it. Number ten. True or false? Typewriter is the longest English word that can be typed using only the top row on a keyboard. And I will say the top row of letters on a keyboard. This is not a trick question where it's like the F1234. I'm not, that's not, you know. She is trying to type it out in her head right now. Typewriter, true or false? The longest English word that can be typed using only the top row of letters. I'm going to say true. True is correct. Because I'm going to say true. So we're at six as our producer dies a little on the inside. <laughs> but speechless. But um, I know it's off camera, but, but you know. Okay, so six. So you're in first place. Not bad. Catch up, top, people. Top of the podium. Top of the podium. Top Who's, of the podium. Uh, we have... I'm I'm kind of nervous though because I love my staff, but the people who are left are good at trivia. Well, Let's now see. we know that y'all can take me to trivia, and I can help you win. True. True. And our producer saying those were easy questions. <laughs> 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 see, here's the thing about trivia though, and here's what I'll say: this trivia is easy if you know it, and hard if you don't. And there's really no in, no, between. in between. Yeah, I went to trivia yeah. a couple weeks ago. And they were, it was all about the wars. Like, all, it was, every question yeah. was about wars. I know nothing about any war. Did y'all know that there was an emu war in Central America? No. I did, but I wouldn't have been able to tell you that had you not just said it. Yes, it was a war about emus. Who knew about that? So, yeah. I mean, I'm taking some heat. I knew as soon as someone did well, I knew that I was going to get it. You made this easy. We've always had multiple choice questions. So, you know. All right. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I am in trouble. <laughs> I'm going to get fired by the producer. So after that, we'll call it a good trivia performance. I never know. I can never write that into my script. I say, like, is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Is it going to be unique? After a good trivia performance, right. six out of ten solid. I think you got a shot to actually hold the lead. I hope so. Keep so my fingers Keep my fingers crossed. We are going to get into our next segment, Let's Get Professional. Oh, yeah. I love my job, so I'm ready. Okay. That's good. 8.5. Remember, I said that. This is being recorded, so it's good you said you love your job. Yeah. you know. Okay. So, but you actually do. You said that off, you said that off the microphone before. Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, I want to dive into what you do, kind of your philosophy for how you do it, and, okay. and kind of learn about that. So, as a coordinator for student organizations, you work with... Um, the International Student Organization, the Black Student Union, uh, but also all of our registered student organizations. So first, could you just explain for the audience what the difference is in a student activity organization and a registered student organization? Yeah. And just for the sake of ease, SAO is going to be student activity organization, RSO, registered student organization. So now that we've explained that, we can use the acronyms. Yeah. So SAO, so ISO, which is an international student organization, BSU, or two SAOs, those are those organizations are directly funded by the student activity fees. So every student pays an activity fee, and those fees help fund our SAOs, which is written in the SGA Code of Laws. If you want to read the Code of Laws, you can go on the SGA website. And our RSOs are registered student organizations, so that means all other organizations who are not SAOs. So if you and your 10 friends get together and you want to start a club, you come see me and I help you do that. So basically all you need is a faculty advisor, 10 members, mm -hmm. and that's it. And that's why we have over 550 different RSOs here. Yeah. So there's tons of ways to get involved. What are some of the most like unique RSOs that exist out there that people might not think there's a club for this? Yeah, we have a whitewater and kayaking club here at Auburn. We also have a running club. We also have a, we had a parkour club. So the people who, like jump off the stuff. I think that's parkour. Yeah. And then also Hog Hogwarts Rejects, which is really exciting. It's a new organization. They all get together and they read Harry Potter. That's the one I was hoping you were mentioning because I love that they call it the Hogwarts Rejects. Yeah. Because I'm picturing them like, that ah, didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> like, <I laughs> they're kind of, that's they're just really just good. Group. Laugh about it. And then I'm trying to think of another one that's like kind of interesting. We also have a couple rodeo organizations, so like if you like horses, and then we also have aviation organizations. So Auburn is like a big aviation school, so we have groups that are directly related to the aviation department, and they help you fly planes. So there's 550 plus organizations. There's more coming all the time. 
Um, how do you balance all that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so basically a day in my life, what I do, I get to work, I pull up AU Involved. So that's our big system that has all of our organizations. So I approve events. I approve multiple things. So I, I go there first and I filter by the week. So each week I'm approving events up to two weeks in advance. So I look at them for this current week, but then also two weeks in advance. So I approve events first and then I'm switching. I feel like the morning I switch to my SAO, so BSU and ISO. And then I determine what do they need from me this week. If they're having events, I make sure they have everything in order for having catering. I'm making sure I've talked to catering. So I try to like balance my day. All right, so the ISO is the International Student Organization. Mm -hmm. BSU is the Black Student Union. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about what each of those organizations do. Yeah, so BSU was created to represent the interests and concerns of black students on campus. Basically, it's a great organization for all black students, but then also students who aren't African American or black. Mm -hmm. You can join BSU if you like. They have weekly meetings on Mondays at 5. They just get together and talk about cool topics. I actually found a, um, a yearbook from BSU in the 90s. They brought Shirley Chisholm to campus. They brought the Blind Boys of Alabama. Like, BSU was popping, and it still is, which is really exciting. It's just a safe place for black students on Auburn's sure. campus. And then ISO was created to help international students adapt because we all know – Coming to a new country when you're going to school, it's just a lot if you don't have any friends. So ISO helps get those individuals together and just have a good time. One of my favorite things every year is the ISO Peace Dinner. Yes, uh, peace talk a little dinner bit about is that. huge. We did not have Peace Dinner last year, but we're planning on having Peace Dinner this year. The 2019 Peace Dinner had over 6,000 students come. Get some good food from different countries. The students from those um, countries are actually in the kitchen with catering, making their meals so they're correct. And then you come out, you get the food, and then they're teaching you about the food. Which is really That's cool. one of my favorite events every year. Yeah. I just think it's cool. I think everyone has a good time. It's good food. You learn about a bunch of cultures. You try food you maybe never even heard of. Right. If you're me, you try food you never even yeah. heard of. And like you end up being like, oh, I need to find a restaurant that does this. Because yeah, I wanna, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, so... Um, what's been the biggest surprise or the most unexpected part of your job so far? Um, I would say the most unexpected part is um, teaching students how to plan an event. Because coming from working in programming, I assume everybody knows how to plan an event, and that's not the case. So I really enjoy meeting with RSOs and sitting down, walking through their, their, their event ideas and teaching them like how to plan a successful event. And then once they execute it, them calling me and saying, like, we had 400 students at our event. It makes me really happy. Yeah. So is that how you measure success of an event? Is it the number of people who come, the way it was executed? How do you measure its success? I think it just depends on the specific organization. For RSOs, if this is their first time having an event, just getting that feedback for them or just telling them, them telling me, like, thank you for helping me get this resource. Thank you for helping me get with reservations, get food, get funding, I think is a measure of success. Because once they have done that once, they can continue to do that and they can teach other people. Um, For BSU and ISO, I think it just really depends on the specific event. And for general assemblies, I think just getting a mixture of students coming to their weekly meetings and teaching them about topics that they might not learn anywhere else, I think is really exciting and then I think for ISO just seeing international students excited about seeing each other because I know with the pandemic people we were all all over the place so I think getting them together in one space and just seeing the smiles on their faces seeing their friends that have come back from their countries is really exciting what's something that's more challenging than you expected it to be and I always clarify this question challenging doesn't mean like negative yeah because challenges can be a good thing but what are, what has been something that's more challenging than you thought it would be? Especially maybe uniquely for you coming from the perspective of a grad assistant in the yeah. Office of Involvement than going into being a full-time staff member. Is there something that you found to be more challenging than expected? Um, I think what the thing that's most challenging is trying to give my all to everybody because I want everybody to be successful and I want to make sure I'm giving every everybody all the tools they need to be successful but I also have to realize that I can't all the time mm -hmm. so I think that's very challenging trying to balance all right um if there are students out there wanting to start a new organization you hit on this earlier but maybe just a little bit of detail like what's the website for you involved like if you give them the URL yeah and then just go over one more time what those specific things they have to do with yeah 
So our website is auburn.edu slash AUinvolve. So the first thing you need to do is get 10 students. So once you have those 10 students, then you also need a faculty advisor, faculty or staff advisor. So if you have someone that you trust and they want to be a part of your organization, that can be your advisor. Once you get that information, you come see me or you come see the involvement ambassadors, and then they'll walk you through our um our online application. You'll put in all that information. You'll create a constitution and bylaws, and we have a sample of that on our website. Put in all that, and then we'll take that to our organizations board, and they'll look over your application, and they'll either approve or deny your organization. And where can they find the involvement ambassadors? The involvement ambassadors are in Suite 3130 on the third floor of the Student Center at the front desk from 10 a.m. Well, they're there all day, but consultations are from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. if you want to start a group, 3130 Melton Student Center. You can also email us at involve at auburn.edu. Who's your favorite coworker? Um, All of them. I'm, I, I'm just waiting for someone to actually just say, like, this person. Just because, I don't know, I think it'll be funny. All of them. But all of them. I mean, that if I had to pick. No, don't pick. Don't Missy do and Miss Becky Missy. are two administrative assistants. Hardest working people in the office. Hardest working people in the office. I don't know what I would do without Missy and Miss Becky. Yep. So those are my For two sure. favorite people. For sure. Because without them, there will be no involvement. That's a good answer. I will take it personally, but that's a good answer. <laughs> Looking to the year ahead, what some things we're getting back to normal um, what is something you're hoping to accomplish? Like next year, the next school year uh, is going to be a success if what? Um, I think it'll be a success if we can, I within BSU, ISO, I think if we can get those second year students back involved again, I think that will be a success. But then also for the RSOs, just getting them back to normal because I know most of them weren't really having events or having meetings, so just getting them back on track. I think you hit on something there, those second year students. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that is going to be important for all of us to remember is while we have a lot of people who are going to be sophomore in academics, it's going to be in a lot of ways like their freshman year yes. of involvement because so many people, we were doing things this past year and we had events and we had opportunities mm-hmm. for people, but so many people weren't physically here. Yeah. So from a physical standpoint, being able to get involved, it's like we have two first year classes. Exactly. Um, how are you going to approach that? I think with Grace and I think – even this year, like trying to get exec members and get um, other le- levels of leadership, it was hard because we had nobody. Mm-hmm. So just knowing, telling our students, like, it's okay. You can't keep saying, oh, we did it prior to this year because no one knows what that looks like. Yeah. Most of those students are not here anymore. Mm-hmm. So they don't know what it looks like prior to COVID. So just giving them credit and just saying, like, it's okay if we don't know how to do this event. We're here together. If it's, uh, we're going to do trial and error. Yeah, that's for me, like, training is going to be, like, twice yeah. the twice the time spent, I mm-hmm. think, on training than any other year prior. Yeah. Um, what would you say, going through, and I know it was your first year, but you still had exposure to the office as a grad assistant because you were here so much. Yeah. Um, what is the most valuable lesson you're going to take out of the adjusted operations we had? Um. We don't have to have a meeting for everything. Some things can be in an email, and that is okay. okay. It's okay to send a long email, mm-hmm. and like in in intertwining your email, you can have points. So sometimes what we do is like after at the end of the email or in the middle, I say, "Send me a picture of your cat over your dogs." That's how I know you actually read my email. It's a good trick. So I think everything doesn't have to be a meeting, and I think we are efficient in that. We can be more efficient in that way. I mean, I also like meeting. I'm a people person, but sometimes I'm like, okay, this 20-minute meeting could have been an email. Yeah, and I think that's something that is going to be in some ways easy and in some ways challenging to pass on to students Yeah, because I think making sure everyone reads – you have different levels of involvement throughout Mm -hmm. organizations. So while, yes, the people who are the the president and the most involved people in the organization are going to read the emails, how are we making sure – that the member who's been around for two weeks yeah, exactly. is going to read that full email and not get overwhelmed with it. But I like that tip about send me a picture of a cat or a dog or something. Yeah. Or just, giraffe. Yeah, right. Or, or giraffe, giraffe. Or just or having like back. random things in there just to keep them engaged. And then you know who's reading who isn't. And not to like get people in trouble, but to know, okay, maybe I need to find a way to like organize the email a little bit differently. Right. And, or, hey, I need to make sure I reiterate this information the next time I talk to people because some people didn't get it. Right. Um, so I think that's going to be one of those lines to walk to. Mm-hmm. But I totally agree. Learning that like... There are some things we just didn't need to physically be here to accomplish. Yeah. Because we were able to do – if we were able to do them last year, we don't necessarily have to physically be here to accomplish exactly. them. And helping students to learn that too. And I think that will help the efficiency of everyone. Yeah, I do too. What's your best advice to current students wanting to pursue a career in what you do? Um, I would say do it. 
it doesn't matter what your undergrad degree is in. Clearly, mine's in biology. It's hanging up on the wall. Am I doing biology? No. It doesn't matter what you or your undergrad degree is in. If you're passionate about it, go for it. Go for it. Whether that's here at Auburn, whether that's somewhere else, find a program that fits you and that you like. Go to those interview days. I went to like four or five interview days, and I found out that Auburn was the place for me. It's okay if you turn down assistantships. It's okay if you turn down programs. Make sure the place that you pick is for you because those two years or that year and a half will be super critical for you in the long run. What's your best if you talked about interview days? What are your best interview tips? Um, I think just being yourself, because yeah. even on even I know Zoom is hard, but even through Zoom, at least for me, I can tell when people aren't being genuine. So I think even if you're messing up, it's OK to say, can you repeat that question for me? Just being genuine and just being yourself. And I think that's so important, too, because once you get the job, you're going to be yourself. Right. So like if you can't be yourself in the interview, it might not be the best fit for you Correct. to be there. Correct. So having the confidence to mm-hmm. be yourself. And when we say be yourself, I think we would both say be your best professional self. Yes, in exactly. The like don't come to the interview with a t-shirt on preferably. Sure. If that's the vibe for the office, go for it. But if everybody's right. in business professional, mm-hmm. if you don't have business professional, we have places on campus for you to get business professional. Yeah, but we make have the, sh- the campus career closet, exactly. which is an opportunity for students if you're in the need. Um, campus career closet, you can find information about that online. Um, and that gives you professional clothes that you can wear for interviews. Mm-hmm. So that's, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. So definitely like going with the office flow. Mm-hmm. That's something you hit, too. Like, Auburn has a lot of opportunities for students. They really do. And, and I, I think of, like, your position primarily when I think about that. I know we all, really everyone on campus is here yeah. for students to have opportunities to do things and to learn things. But I, what are some of the things that you think are the least known that, that you're like, man, I wish more students would take advantage of doing this on I campus? I think, honestly, the campus career closet mm-hmm. and, I think, academic support. So career center and academic support together. Academic support um, has SI, which is supplementary instruction, but they also have academic coaching. So I was never a good test taker in undergrad. I always either waited to the last minute and just sat there, like, circled things. I was never a good test taker. I didn't know how to manage my time. And academic support can help you do that. But they can also help you study. If you're like me and Billy who kind of wait to the last minute to do some type of things, they can help you shift that mindset so you are not super bogged down the night before yeah. a project and you have seven things to do. I like, too, that you said, like, if you're not like me and Billy about doing this, like, I think also it's important with our students. This isn't necessarily involvement. But to, like, and to take some pressure off students, like yeah. not trying to act like we're perfect in front of students yeah. and like showing them like well, no one's perfect. Everyone's going to make mistakes. So exactly. like it's OK for you to make a mistake. And then it's important how you respond to it. Right. I think that's the biggest thing. And I think that's what we do in our office. It's OK if we make a mistake. We're learning from it. Right. And people above us are like, it's OK. Mm-hmm. I think if you're just being transparent 100 percent and if something if something's on a fail just telling somebody above you like, hey, I don't think I did this right. They'll be like, OK, that's fine. We can help you improve on it next time. For sure. I think that's important advice for students, too, yeah. is is when you make a mistake, it's fine. Grow from it and learn from it. Exactly. And then don't make the mistake again. Right. It's like one time mistakes are fine. That's how you grow. R- repeat mistakes are where it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, now that we've given the viewers a good idea of who you are and what you do and that you might be a trivia champion. Maybe. More controversy brewing. I'm getting daggers stared at me over here. Um, I want to move into our final segment that is called Quote Me on That. Okay. Where we are both going to share a quote or saying that, that we like, and it can be meaningful, it can be funny, it can be thought-provoking, it can be all of the above. No one's hit all of the above yet, so challenge extended. Um, but whatever you want it to be. I'll start so you have a little bit of time to think. Okay. Uh, mine is, I'd rather have four quarters than 100 pennies, and you can quote me on that. What that means and what I think about it with students is four quarters and 100 pennies is the same amount. But I think a lot of times, like, we have students that come in that are very excited to do a lot. And that's mm-hmm. great. It's one of my favorite things is how enthusiastic our students are. But sometimes they do so much that none of it is getting their best. Mm-hmm. I'm like, but if you pick a few things that you're really good at and you can give it your best, I think that's more valuable. Yeah. So instead true. of doing everything, and you can make that expression mean whatever you want it to yeah. mean, really. But it can be about friendships. It can be about whatever. But I think in terms of our students... You don't have to try to do everything. Yeah. Pick the things that are a priority for you and do those really well because that's going to be the most valuable thing for you. So I'd rather have four quarters than 100 pennies. You can quote me on that. What's yours? I don't know. 
I have no clue. I'm not good at quotes. Okay. Um, I would just say, it's not really a quote, but it's a statement. Sure. I would just say continue to be yourself, your authentic self throughout your entire co- collegiate career, but then also be transparent. I'm very, I'm a people person and I realize that, but then also I know my people meter is at zero and I have to tell my friends like, okay, I'm at a zero today. It's not that I don't love you. I just need my time. So I think being transparent is also really key. And you can quote her on that. You can quote me on that. Oh, I like it. I like that you are like, yeah, I'm going to quote myself. Right. I'm just yes. going to quote myself for that. I love it. All right. Alexis, thank you so much for joining me today. Enjoy getting to know a little bit more about you, as I'm sure our viewers did as well. I hope so. I hope give me the most views. <laughs> give her the most views. Hit that like and share. Hit that and like and share button. So, um, like getting to know kind of your path of student involvement and what you do. Until next time, I'm Billy Ferris. This has been Access Involvement. We're discovering your path is as easy as finding hay in a haystack.